Welcome, Industry 45 show. Shane Christopher Neal here, uh, live from the Giant TV studios. Uh, this interview, though, isn't here in the Giant TV studios. It's actually happened in uh, Niagara Falls at Seneca Queen. Sean Kelly has this book, Metal on Ice. It is uh, Tales from Canada's Hard Rock and Heavy Metal Heroes. And Sean's a great guy. He has played with Nelly Furtado. He started Crash Kelly in 2003, which went to about 2008. Uh, something I found out about... Sean is that uh, he played a band called 69 Duster with Dale Martindale from Images in Vogue. And I was always a big Images in Vogue fan. Just didn't see the connection there with Sean, but uh, you learn something every day. And of course, he was the bass player in Helix uh, in 2009. Great guitar player. He plays with Lee Aaron right now. And uh, Sean and I caught up in Niagara Falls to talk about Metal on Ice. Industry 45 show. Shane Christopher Neal. Hope you enjoy it. All right, the Industry 45 show, Giant TV with Mr. Sean Kelly, right here with Lee Aaron Band, and his book, Metal on Ice. And I'm so impressed with this book. I, I started, I bought it like a week ago, okay. and I'm like a third of the way through. So awesome. I'm doing pretty good for some guy who's pretty busy. But um, when did you decide it was a good idea to write this book? Well, I, uh, I wrote it because actually I, I, had a, I had my own band called Crash Kelly. Yes. And the guitar player, the other guitar player in Crash Kelly uh, worked in the publishing industry. And, and I'd always be telling him, you know, regaling him with stories of Canadian rock trivia and, and always complaining, look at, you know, in all these Canadian rock history books I've read, no one ever really writes about the bands I grew up with or went to go see at my local yeah. arena in North Bay, right? The Helixes, the Honeymoon Suites. I felt that was a period of history that was totally glossed over. And I thought it was a very important part of our Canadian musical history. And, uh, and I said, you know, someone needs to, you know, step to up tell to the this plate. story, right? And he said, well, you're the guy. So you, you're, cause you're a true Canadian. You're a hockey player. Well, who kind of, kind of, who went to play music. Yeah. Right? Well, well I, I come from a hockey playing family. Uh, and as a hockey player, I'm not a bad guitar player. Let's yes. put it that way. But some, somehow, I mean, my dad played pro hockey. My uncle really? did. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but, uh, the gene skipped me somehow, <laughs> but I did love playing, but, but yeah, like really it was music. That was my calling. Right. Right. So you got involved early in music. Yep. Um, what was the first big break for you as an artist? Like, well, as far as who you played with. I guess the first thing where I kind of, you know, I, I started playing in bars doing the kind of cover scene young, like, yeah. you know, at 16, and then I moved to Toronto, and I met a guy named Jamie Stewart from the band The Cult. Oh, for so sure. So I yeah. had, uh, you know, I'd thrown together a band, I went to university to study classical guitar, and I found the other long hairs in the faculty of music, and we made it, we made a band, and I, I think it was our second gig, we are playing the Gasworks, and Jamie from The Cult was there, and so, that was the first time I, I went, wow, this guy, this is someone I actually listened to. Right. And now we're working together. So, you know, I, I had done that. And I had a little bit of experience. My local band back home in North Bay had done an arena show. Sure. With Colin James. I was like, you know, through all these different experiences, I started to meet, you know, meet people and start to see how the machinations of the whole thing work. Um, and yeah, so, you know, we did the demo with Jamie. Uh, our hair looked great. We were young and skinny. <laughs> Still looks great. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and you know, like life was good. And then I heard a band called Nirvana, and I went, uh oh. Uh oh. And Things I looked around, and all of a sudden, <laughs> no one's wearing the cowboy boots. Yeah, yeah. Dressing. And uh, everyone's wearing plaid. Yeah, it was. It was a bit of a, you know, it was interesting. It was like, you know, my my twenties, which is the time when everyone's really going for it. I was kind of lost because I was so devoted to, to, to hard rock music. Sure. I played a certain way, and all of a sudden that changed. Uh, and in a way, it was good because for my career, it, 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 I think it helped me develop some versatility because I found myself in situations where I had to kind of change if right. I wanted to work. To work out there, absolutely. And, uh, and through that, I actually met a, a great guy named Chad Richardson. Um, we won, we entered a Q107 contest called the Homegrown Contest yes, and won it. Yeah. And then through well, that's that, how Honeymoon Suite did they? Yeah, they, 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 they absolutely, won it. Yeah. Yes. Well, Chad won it one year, and, and that resulted in a record deal with Aquarius, and that was the first time I was touring. But you know, we kind of saw, I remember I was working in Tower Records at the time and uh, you know, it was the first situation where I was like, well, here I am and I'm pricing my record to go up and we actually had an in-store and I had to punch out, do the in-store and then go back to work. I said, okay, so maybe it's, it's not that easy to make a living in the music industry. But it was a great experience. Yes. And, and you know, through there, a couple of kicks at the can and um, and then moved on to my own thing, this Crash, Crash Kelly, Kelly thing. Absolutely. Crash Kelly, absolutely. Crash Kelly, if yeah. I look here, yeah. uh, where I wrote it down here. so. It went from 2003 to 2008. Is that right? That's the kind that's, of like that's the, the, the timeline. Yeah. That's the, definitely the performing yeah. timeline with maybe maybe one or two gigs after. But 
But it's funny, I actually just recorded a, a new Crash Kelly song. Yes, I, I heard that. So yeah, so <laughs> it's, uh, at least creatively, I'm still thinking of that writing. Right. But yeah, but that was uh, that was definitely the the, right. the length of the touring for the band. So let's go back to the book. So yep. you caught up because if I read the book, you've got Daryl Gray who's yeah. from Niagara here, yeah. a great bass player in Helix. Yep. Uh, you got members of Honeymoon Suite. Yeah, you've yeah. got. Uh, Haywire, yeah. Harry Hess from, yeah. from Harry. So did you just reach Jerry out to McGee. The, Jerry McGee, love yeah, Jerry. We've had Jerry on the show many times. Yeah. But but he, did you just reach out to these people and say, listen, yeah. I need some stories about roads on the Canadian terrain and you busting your butt all through the country or yeah. how did that kind of come well, about? Well, some people like, you know, Derry and Johnny uh, from Honeymoon Suite, I'd done some writing with them, yeah. so I kind of knew them. Some people I knew, I I, I was uh, already a, had been a member of Helix. At the, right, uh, you played, played yeah, with that's Helix right, and right with Brian, yeah. so I mean, I had, I had you know, friendships and connections yeah. with Daryl and, and, and Brian Ballmer. Um, and then other people had like re just reached out. I remember yeah. like, with, with Lee Aaron. I mean, it was really, man. Do you think she talked to me? Like you know, like yeah. I, I was, I was such a, a fan. And, and now you you're know, playing in the band. I know. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 man, talk about you know, dream come true, yes, right? Yeah. yeah. And and we actually made a companion CD to go along with the book, right. and that's how it worked out. Uh, you know, we we had done some re versions of the classic songs yes. and had the singer sing them. So that's where I first worked with, with Okay, Lee. yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we kind of hit it off and kind of kindred spirits, I think. That's kind of uh, how it started. Yeah, and then there was an opportunity to play a few shows on, uh, in Ontario. Yeah. And it just clicked, right? So, so, very honored. In this book, are there stories that anybody told you that you thought, you know what, I really don't know if I can publish this? <laughs> or, or Yeah, like, I mean, like, there were the, the the stories that are out there. Look, I mean, there was a certain lifestyle that happened in the absolutely, 80s and, and probably continues on this day. That wasn't the thrust of the book. It's not what I wanted to make the book about. But you know, like it, it's acknowledged yeah. that it happened. But that's not what the book's about. The book is really about uh, what does success look like to different people, and like I, what what was the real impact of this music. And right. I think I think there was more impact. Uh, for the bands that are, are featured in this book than it, than it has been given credit. It's funny, the, I think the, one of the last uh, chapters I read, and it was talking about why or how a record label was so important to an artist. Yeah. Right? And they would sell their souls and they would take next to nothing to have a record deal. In any other business, you'd never sign a contract. Never. Like that. You'd never give away so much. But there's so many people that wanted it. It was like a lottery ticket, yeah. right? Like signing one of those deals, a lottery ticket. And you have to remember, it was very cost prohibitive yeah. to make recordings back then. Like you'd go in and you'd it's have not like your, today where they got ten thousand people in their basement making. Well, recordings. yeah, you've got all yeah. this great technology that's available, which is a good thing. But also, sometimes the things that make things challenging are what actually reinforce creativity. Man, we only have this many tracks, but we got to make it. Right. You start making choices and commitments. But that's another, that's another topic of conversation. I think it's great that kids can go out there and make music and put it out there. So, last question for yeah. you: uh, in your tours across this great country. Um, Give me one story that's special to you, whether it's in Vancouver, British Columbia, or it's in oh. Charlottetown. Uh, just one story that resonates with you as an artist uh, playing here as a Canadian musician. Okay, uh, since we're in Niagara Falls, I'm gonna give you a Niagara Falls story. I got to spend my 40th birthday, because I'm born on New Year's Eve. I turned 40 and I got to play for Global TV for Canada with Nelly Furtado. Really? That's got right. Yeah, play, you were playing with it, yeah. Yeah, I got to play the big New Year's Eve show, yeah. and I got to play Old Lang Syne on electric guitar, guitar right. on my 40th yeah. birthday with my firstborn son and my family around. Beautiful. And to me, like, I mean, that was a that was a beautiful one. You gotta pick up this book, I'm telling you. Metal on Ice, Sean Kelly, and I'm gonna finish reading it. Thanks, and you, my friend, are epic, and thank you so much for taking Thanks, the time. Thanks, my pleasure, I'm man. really looking forward to tonight. Awesome. All right, Sean Kelly, make sure you check him out.